This is Nick with Logos by Nick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this 3D pixel text using Inkscape. So we'll go ahead and get started here in Inkscape. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can update Inkscape's appearance with this dark theme and these new icons, I'll have the link to that information in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do is set up our document uh, with the grid and everything. So we'll go to File, Document Properties. Let me try that again. File, Document Properties. And I will set the display units to pixels. I'm going to turn off the page border. And I'm going to come over here to this tab that says Grids. And where it says uh, Rectangular Grid from this drop down, I'm going to click New. And if you notice, it's going to put all these, uh, it's going to put a grid on the canvas here with all these different boxes. And I'm just going to change the spacing between the X and the Y so we get bigger boxes. I'm going to change this to maybe 50, see how that looks. Uh, maybe I'll make that a little bigger. Maybe I'll do 75. This will depend on uh, what resolution your monitor is. Um, for me, I think uh, I'm using it 1920 by 1080. I think 75 looks pretty good here. I'll go ahead and leave that as it is and then close out of this. And then we want to go to View, make sure we have Custom selected, and then we'll zoom in at 1 to 1. And then I'm going to open up the Align and Distribute menu with this button over here. We're going to want last selected chosen from this drop down, and then I'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button there. So what we want to do first is, uh, actually, you know what? We need to come up here to where it says uh, enable snapping. We're going to want this turned on, snap, uh, snap to cusp nodes. We'll want that selection turned on, and now we'll be good to start it. Also, just make sure you have uh, snap to grids selected as well. That should be on by default, but just make sure to be, uh, double check just to make sure. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab the squares and rectangles tool and I'm going to snap the cursor to an intersecting area of the grid and then just click and drag until it snaps to the, the bottom right portion of that grid so it creates a square like that. And I'll convert that to a path by going to path, object to path, and I'm going to choose from our colors down here. I'm just going to, I'm just going to make this uh, pink, I guess. And what I'll do next is I'm going to grab the select tool and I'm just going to basically use this, these boxes to create our letters. So uh, I'm going to create the letter T here for this uh, tutorial. I'm going to be writing the word text like you saw in the thumbnail. So I'll just duplicate this by hitting control D and then I'll just take this and bring it down here. To duplicate it, you could hit control D or you could right click it and go to duplicate. I think it's just easier to use the keyboard shortcut. So we have these two boxes. We're going to want two more. So I'm going to click and drag over bo both of those and duplicate those and snap them down here. And I'll make another copy of this one box and I'll put this down here to the right because this is going to be a lowercase t. And I'll put one on either side up here. So I'll duplicate that again by hitting control D. I'll put this one up here and I'll put another one right there. And there we have the letter T. So the next thing we're going to do is create the letter E. I'm going to again duplicate this box. I'm going to start this letter two boxes over to the right. We want to leave two units of space between each letter. So I'm going to put this down here and bring this over here. And I'll duplicate that, bring that down there, bring this over here, and bring that over here. I'll bring a copy of this up here, then over one, then one down here, and then another over there, like that, so we end up with a, uh, maybe I'll shift that around. There we go, that's how we end up with the letter E like that. Maybe I'll put that right there. I'll take another copy. You may have to experiment a little bit. Um, this is going to be like a, like I said, a pixel style uh, lettering. So I think that looks pretty good as a lowercase e right there. Next would be to create the X. So I'm just going to create another box. Again, going two units over to the right. Start that one up here. Put one in the center. Then another one up here. And again, just hitting Control D to duplicate. And I'll put two of these down here just like that and there we have our letter X so we already have a letter T created for the last letter so we don't have to go and create that again we could just click and drag over all of those boxes and hit control D to duplicate them and bring them over here two units to the right like that and now we have uh, the pixel letters for our text so what we have to do now is create the 3d portion or the um, the part that extends out of the back of each letter and to do that uh, we're going to do that manually by grabbing the Bezier pen, which is over here, or you could just press B on the keyboard to get that. And I'm going to start with this top portion up here. I'm going to snap, snap to this top right corner and click, and I'm going to big, bring this line going diagonally through its box until it snaps to the next point, like that. And I'll bring it over to the left, 
then down diagonally through here like that, and then back to the starting point. And I'll just make this one yellow. And I'm going to do this again over here. I'm going to create another line, bring it up diagonally like that. And I'll make this one uh, dark red. We can go back or just regular red. We can go back and change these colors when we're done. Don't worry about the colors too much for now. Uh, I'll do the same thing over here. I'm just going to go through and create the 3D portion of each letter. And we're going to alternate these colors between yellow and red. So this was yellow, this is red, this is yellow. This next one will be red. I'll take this one going through here like that. And the rest should be pretty self-explanatory. You could just go through here and create these um, these individual extensions of each letter following with the colors. Uh, I'm going to make this one red. I'll come over here. I'll make this one red as well. And then this one up here will be yellow. And this one, yeah, this one will also be yellow. Because you try to envision, you try to envision it in like an actual 3D sense. These two are both going in, the, they're both facing the same direction, so they'd be the same shade like that. And actually, this should be red as well. Let me grab the select tool and make that red. We could always go back and change these later. I wouldn't get too concerned with um, how the colors look for each one. Let me go back to the Bezier pen. I'm going to do the same thing up here for the letter E. Just go ahead and create this segment of it. I like to stop with start with the top one because the top one should be the lightest. So I that, that sets the tone for the rest of the shapes that I draw on the letter. So I start with the top one, I make that yellow, and then I can go through and make the rest of them. I know which color to make the rest of them after I've done that. Make this one yellow. I'll put another uh, red one down here. And then this one would be red too because it's going in the same direction. Well, it's facing the same direction. And we're gonna have to put one, we're gonna have to put two in the middle here as well. So I'll put this one here. I want this one to be consistent with the color going in its direction. So it's yellow. This one going the opposite way will be red. And then this over here, the piece for this one will be yellow. And then again, one more over here, which will be yellow. And then we have to go and create each one for the, uh, the letter X over here. This should be pretty, by now you should pretty much have the hang of this. I mean, you may have to experiment a little bit because sometimes it's tricky to determine like what should go where, like how to create each shape. But once you get the hang of it, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. Put this one through here like that. I'm gonna make that red. Make another yellow one down here. Oops. If you make a mistake, you could just hit Control Z to undo it. Like sometimes I go to click and I accidentally miss the node and it creates a new point instead of uh, closing it at the original point. You just hit Control Z to undo that. And this one will have to be red as well. This one will be yellow. This will be red. And another one, this one down here will also be red. And once we finish this up, we won't have to do this on the next letter T because we already have those objects created so we can just duplicate them and snap them on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the select tool and I'm gonna uh, click on the top object here and then hold shift and click on the rest of those objects so we can select them, select them all. Oops, not that one and duplicate them by hitting control uh, D and then just bring it over here and snap it onto the letter T like that. And now let me zoom out by holding control and rolling down the mouse wheel. So we pretty much have our letter set. The next step would be to temporarily disable this grid. So we can go to view um, where it says page grid. You could just turn that off. And what I'm gonna do now is instead of altering these, I'm just going to create a duplicate of them and alter the duplicate copy because we want to leave an original, we want to leave an original set here to go back and edit. We could always go back and turn the grid on, turn that grid back on and go back and edit these or add more letters if we'd like later on. If we duplicate, if we take this copy and we shrink it down, it's going to be out of, it's going to be out of sync with the page grid. So let me turn the page grid back off. 
and I'm going to duplicate that by hitting Control D and I'm just going to press 1 on the keyboard so we zoom in to 100% and I'm just going to hold Control and Shift and scale that down a little bit and I want to get rid of the black outline going around those shapes that we manually, manually drew in so with everything selected I'm going to hold Shift and click on this X down here in the lower left corner just hold Shift and click on that and that'll get rid of that fill color I mean the, uh, the stroke color and then we can click off of that to deselect everything uh, the next step would be, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on this. I'm going to click and drag over the entire letter, the, all of the shapes that make up that entire letter, and I'm going to group them together. I'll do the same thing with each letter. I want to group each letter together like that. Just hit the group key, or you can just hit Control G on the keyboard, which is what I like to do. Just hit Control G, that groups them together. And then with this last one selected, I'm going to hold shift and click on the letter X. And I'm just going to come over here to the align menu and click on the button that says align left edges of objects to the right edge of the anchor. Go ahead and click that and it's going to stack it up right next to it. And I'll group that together by hitting control G. And I'll do the same thing with these next letters. I'll hold shift, click on the letter E, stack them next to each other, and then group them together by hitting control G. Then hold shift, click on the letter T stack them up next to each other like that and we can group it all together by hitting control G I'll press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to hundred percent and what we want to do now is just shear this a little bit so I'm gonna click on this object again till we get our rotation handles and I'm gonna hold control and grab this side arrow right here and just bring that up one step like that and that's gonna give it like a bit of sort of like a uh, like an iso uh, an isometric sort of um, perspective I guess you can call it and once we've done that we can go ahead and click ungroup a bunch of times to ungroup everything and now we can go and alter our colors further if we want to like for example if I want to take these red objects hold shift and click click on each of these red objects I could take them and make them a darker shade because it, it seems to uh, it seems to be clashing with the pink a little bit like that and that should pretty much give you the gist of it. You can go about creating all of the other letters of the alphabet or, or even numbers or whatever else you'd like to do. It would just take a little bit of creativity, that's all, to figure out how to do it. But that's pretty much the gist of it. That's how you can go about creating these uh, 3D pixel letters using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.